Bargast, Steel Will, what's going on, guys? There's big. There's, well, I'm not going to call that small. Let's call this the standard size. Let's call this the Mongo size. We like Mongo. So, I'm going to say nice things for a little while, and then the trashing shall commence, okay? Because we've got lots to trash. There's always going to be something with me. Um, I, I mean, actually, as bizarre as this sounds, I get accused of just being a running advertisement, uh, you know, pimp and stuff, like nothing's ever wrong with a knife. And I'm going, you ever see one of my reviews? Um, review is a very, very loose term. But I'm just saying, have you ever actually watched one all the way through? Because there will be people, I think they'll watch the first four or five minutes and they'll go, yeah, I like it too. And I'm going, you realized I didn't like this knife, right? Um, because they didn't watch the seven, minute seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So, okay, uh, just to let you know up front, Bargast, it's an interesting design. That's why I bought them, okay? Bought them. They were not sent to me. Um, if they were, it wouldn't make any damn difference. I, I'm just a curmudgeon anyhow, so I'm going to tell it how, how it is. I've had people send me knives for free, and uh, I don't think they'll do it again. But, and others do, because they know I like some of their knives, I don't like some of their knives. I like real steel, they've sent me some. And, and man, I think they thought twice about sending me another one, but they have, so, you know, that's just one of those things where I think if they understand who you are and what you're about, they can live with it. I mean, you know, you live by the sword and die by the sword, and if you make a knife that's a winner, I'm gonna call the winner. If you make one that I don't like, I'm going to tell you I don't like it, as somebody else will. Bargast, I like the design. That's why I bought them, okay? There's a lot of things I'd like to change about them, but I like the design. That's why I bought them. It took me two damn minutes to get to that point. Now, you can buy them on White Mountain Knives, and you can get 10% off. So, it's 76 bucks. For a G10D2 washer-based knife. And it's 72 bucks for the small one. Uh, folded length, 5.51. Full, 9.5 with a 4-inch blade. Okay. Let's talk about this one first. Yes, it's a big-ass dog. And that's, to tell you the truth, you know, you're starting to nod. Oh, shit, I know why you bought it. Because it's a big-ass knife. And you like big-ass knives. That's not... 9.53 inches not on anybody's ruler but it's nine point you know four three five something like that it's over nine and a quarter and it's about 24 centimeters and yes it's four inches and yes that's about 102 or three millimeters okay now this one is actually human size which i don't like humans anyhow and so three and a half and 90 millimeters overall. Uh, it's the old, uh, oh, okay. So it's a little bit more than eight and a quarter, which is kind of the three and a half, eight and a quarter, eight, three and a half, eight and a quarter. It's like how many knives are like that? Uh, and uh, 21 and a half centimeters. So, you know, 8.35 inches. Now, Another good thing is to check out the blade stock, and this is three and a half millimeter on this one. Let's see if the if the monster dog thirteen points or point one three six inches and point five two six overall. Ooh, and it's all we could do. Maybe we should try on this one and see if it actually agrees. Thirteen point four point five two. Okay, come here, fatty. Ooh, this is six tenths at 15.2. So yes, it's fatter and it's a true four millimeter blade at 0.156 probably, 159 probably, if you brought it out. So it's big. Ah, ergos, yes. Ergos, yes. Yes, I like them. I like the ergos on it. I like the design on them, okay? 
I like this nice milled swedge up here. I like the fact that it's got a little choil in here for sharpening. I like the fact that it's satin blade and it's really a nice blade shape for use of many purposes, you know. So that is sharp. Come on, Mongo. That, yeah, they're sharp. Okay, they're sharp. And give me all my pieces of paper here. They come in a box that's incredibly frustrating and maddening, at least for me. Um, here's the problem with this. It's, it's this fold-in little tab here in the bottom. What'll happen is the cardboard here will get separated and then it'll start it'll start separating here too. And so you'll be jamming this tab in and it won't, it won't fit back in and then it'll start crinkling and folding up and you'll drive yourself crazy. So after a while. Now, oh, by the way, you do get a, a clip for the left hand side, okay? Cause you know, you've got a right hand tip up but you can go left hand. And let's throw the paperwork out here and see what they're saying. It's their tactical series, not their urban series. And they tell you all about the knife, not here, okay? Uh, yeah, it's another thing, it'd be nice, uh, but they do on the outside of the box to a degree, but not to the degree that you get from other knives. Certainly Spyderco puts an insert in and actually talks about their knives. This, it gives you some basic stuff. Um, if you look at the end of a Kaiser box, they'll say the blade length, uh, whoever the design guy might be, some other things like that. So this doesn't give you a lot. It says an M here. That means this is the medium size one, not the large. Okay. So if you grab, let me see, grab the other one. See, there's no M, just the F3701. So you got big dog and normal dog. And they're big, big blades. Hold on, let me throw something out here. I mean, just for trying to get some kind of size comparison, if you have a paramilitary too. There's the biggest one. Now, this one should be just about right on. It's just, just a skosh bigger than the PM2, but not much. So that's what you're looking at. Although this is 3.8 ounces. Let's throw the scale down because I think that's going to be a big deal. Uh, these are not lightweight knives by any measure of the imagination. Uh, there's 152 grams. So let's roll. Well, let's do this one too. Okay. This is 231 grams. Jeez. Okay. 152 grams. And let's put them on ounces. So 5.3. Now, this is 3.8. See what I'm saying? It's, it's heavier. It's heavier. It's got some big old thick liners and this and that. So let's do ounces on this one. This ought to be a, a hee-haw. Half a pound, baby. 8.15. So is, does that bother you to carry 8.15? Not me. I don't, I really could care less. Uh, I mean, it'd be nice if it was lighter and still this large, uh, but I like the fact that it's large. That's number one. Number two, weight is kind of secondary and it's going to be, to a degree, it's going to be the function of the size of the knife, of course. Now, these are big old thick steel liners and uh, about 30% lockup. What do we got on little guy here? Yeah, a little stronger lock up on that one, probably 45%. So stronger lock up, looks like it's really engaged more of that lock face there. Plunge on them looks pretty, pretty reasonably symmetrical. Uh, fit and finish is not bad on these. These are made in China. Uh, Ergos, like I said before, pretty good. Let me flip it over for reverse grip. Wow, that's that's all there in a bag of chips right there. That's that's uh, that's crazy good. And this one is probably 
better for medium hands, even really large to medium and smaller. Uh, really you feel like you're filling that handle of the knife, but very neutral, like palm swell thing going on here all the way. Uh, and jimping up on this backspacer and they give you a backspacer. Okay, so I'm, I'm, I like that. Maybe I should summarize what I do like and then we'll just start rolling downhill from there. See, already past five minutes in big time. Um, and jimping on top of here. Okay, and kind of a thumb ramp thing going. Now you've got uh, opening mechanism after opening mechanism. And so let's go to this one, which will be a hell of a lot of fun to do. I'm using a little wrist. There's no wrist. Oh, it went. Okay, it went. So as soon as I'm going to tell you I can't flip it open without using a wrist, then it'll do that. Well, this one actually is softened up a bit. And that's going to happen with copper uh, or with these uh, bronze washers. So, I mean, that does fly in my face of why I'd prefer bearings. Okay, but you're right. Bronze washers will smooth uh, over time and we will take one of these apart and you will see. And also you can polish the bronze washers and give yourself uh, some lead time as opposed to wait for father time to, to uh, wash them or uh, buff them out and uh, make it smoother. But it'll happen over time with use. Uh, not bad, yeah. Uh, you know, it just seems, I don't know if it just seems to me a little odd to make a flipper with washers because flippers really work so much better with bearings, uh, especially on the drop. I, I think it's not so much deployment, but, you know, things like that. It just doesn't have a drop to it, okay? Okay, see like that? Here's Here's one that ha it is, is bigger. It's about the size of the biggest and it's called the Vexor. Now, kick right open, no problem. And that's because there's wash, I mean, there's bearings. Okay, that is fun. And that is just lazy, easy, good, right? Boom, just like that. So this will just walk around with you. It's a big knife. Come here. Just about. Just about the same. This one edges it a little bit. But they're both big knives. But this is lighter, thinner. Uh, but still, you know, uh, an equal blade. This is either D2 or I can't remember if it's... If it's 9C, it made some of these in 9CR18, which is a good steal if it's done right. And I think Sabivi slash Wee Knives does a good job. Um, this is D2. And um, I do admire the fact that Sabivi's starting to move on to like 9CR. Some of the others are going to Sandvik Steel, like 14C28N, and you know, N690 and all that. Yes, D2 steel is called a 12% tool steel, okay? Uh, and when you hit 13%, you're technically in the stainless range. Um, people in moist climates are still gonna have some corrosion exposure on, on this because it can be 11 points. Um, the formula can vary on the chromium. It can vary on the vanadium. It can vary on some of the other elements too. But so to me, this is Chinese D2. Uh, I'm, I'm not all that in love with it. I'd be fine if this, I actually, I'd prefer it to be in 9CR18, you know, or an N690, something like that. Really VG10 would be fine too. So that would be my preference. Even OS8, OS10. You know, a lot of the Kubi knives now are OS10. Uh, there you go. There's my attempt. Yeah, it feels a little. This one, uh, you, it feels like uh, these washers need to get buffed. They need to get sanded because that's 
yeah, it feels gritty in there. And I've had this one apart. I'm going to tell you right now. I've had this one apart, and it's not grit in there. It's just the washers. So uh, not making really good. Uh, they're, they're not. It's nice. Uh, this feels much better. This actually feels much better. So, okay, okay. And you can shake it down. Uh, you can middle finger flick it. You can thumb flick it or whatever you want. Okay, so thumb flick, middle finger flick, flipper tab, flipper tabs jumped, flipper tabs not too obtuse. Uh, nice little milling going on here, front and back, deep carry pocket clip, and they include one for going left hand. Righto, righto, okay. And let me just check this real quick before I call it. Yeah, yeah, okay, I remember now. Yeah, because I've had these for, I don't know, three weeks or something. But, yeah, that's number six. Number six is, and, you know, I'm just getting tired of that. Savivi so doesn't do that, and some of the others are getting away from it, too. So these are number eights all the way across. Just makes it life so much easier if you disassemble. So number six is no, no. And nothing special about the hardware and nothing really specially low about the price. It's 70 whatever dollars, so $76. Love them. Now, LTK is the discount code on White Mountain Knives, so that'll give you, you know, $7.60 off. So it'll, on, the, on the big dog here. And, but the, the small one's like 72 or something, so not a lot of reduction in price for that. So it gets you in the 60s, but, I mean, I think this sucker's 52 you know, um, hmm. so yeah, I mean, there's just a lot of $50 G10 knives out there with, you know, bearings and they're big and they're really functional and, and they're a lot of fun. This is the best tech swordfish. Love my fish, you know, one fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish. And, you know, you got to think about Tucson. They, they play in with the G10 as well. And then this is 14C28N. My buddy Max did the 116. This baby right here, you could buy this for like $39. Excuse me? You could buy this for $39, you know? So uh, on the on their Tucson store online, I don't know what they're bidding them for on the on the other, on you know, and whatever you, your bid is that wins is your bid, but deep carry pocket clip. So there's a lot of competition out there. And you get a choice of wonderful colors, like black. Um, also, let me show you all the other col rainbow colors. Oh, you can get black with black. So you got a choice of black or black with black. And there's your stats for the smaller one, by the way. Bronze washers and five point whatever ounces. Okay, so, yeah, uh, deep carry. Done well with flat-headed screws, so we're not sticking way up and being obtuse there. Uh, maybe Best Tech could take, uh, you know, a lesson from that. Although Best Tech embeds their clip in the scale where these set it up on top. So the best of all worlds, embed the clip in the scale and then use flat screws for the best po possible pocket uh, clearance. And um, this is really a pretty good pocket clip setup right here. It actually does go in and out of the pocket just fine. So, okay. Quit your bitch and damn it, LTK. Oh, do you see that? Wow, it just kicks right up. This one is going to have more troubles because you could just feel the grittiness on those on those washers and you'll see if I, maybe I should take this one apart I'll show you what the washers look like they yeah they need some help uh, this one probably pretty nice though I haven't had this one apart but I could just tell by the feel of it so I mean that's just me buying two I wanted to get the large and the small I'm glad I did so I could kind of compare the QC on them as well and I think this one got away from somebody and, uh, you know, that's too bad, especially at that price. There's competition. People need to wake up. And, and let me just talk about the design on this knife. And um, 
So, like Knife News, uh, can't remember the date of this one. It's probably, there it is, August 19th. Um, talking about Varangi Knives, uh, the design of the Vargas, you know, smaller, larger size. But they did the Plague Doctor, which I reviewed, and you know what? That's just not, that's not happening for me. They did a, a, a medium and a large, and I liked the fact that it was huge, and I saw it at the Blade Show, and so I got one to uh bought one to uh review on my channel and now now i just couldn't feel it this this humpity hump mm -mm, mm -mm, that, that's just too extreme and so what did they do they kind of took out the hump and what was this called a sensor c-e-n-s-o-r or whatever so this i haven't had yet but it's kind of the plague doctor without the hump and at least it's only 59 bucks and then we got this. Now, I think this is the best design of the bunch, don't you? I mean, looking at those, yes. But, and let me get back to what I was going to show you, which is, didn't you like the Shula? Did any of you guys get this? It's not a huge knife, but man, I mean, the, the action on this was great. It has bearings, and it just drops beautifully. Feels great in the hand. Just, just a great knife. And... It was only 50 freaking dollars, not 75. So, and uh, the Screamer. I like the Screamer as well, and I did a review on that, and it has bearings, and I don't mind that one at all either. Now, it was 63, okay? So, uh, but the Kobold, I can I could pass, and some of the others. So, uh, Diane Tengu, not that crazy about. And the problem is the Cut Jack and the Modus, uh, from China have FRN scales and uh, washers and if they would have had I don't mind the FRN if they would just had bearings I'd have been all in for that but I got rid of my cut jack and modus but yeah they just kind of lost the mojo on that one trying to find my balance point it's right here on the on the hoss I don't know if it's the same on this smaller one yeah it's about the same point right there okay so yeah as i said before ergos are great design i like um design flows great flows right back here in the bolster goes around here i'd say blade blade to handle length is fine i like the fact that you can flip it or flick it i like the opening access for it i like this little machine pattern along here if this had bearings and it came in a natural G10, even a light gray or a blue, uh, I'd have one permanent to carry, especially I'd get the Haas. I, I don't know. I want to be in the room when they talk about this at Steelwell. I would love to be in the advisory room and talk about what we should do. I think I could sell more knives. If I was their employee sitting there saying, you know, I mean, how many of these places really put the knives in their hand and really are in touch with the consumer? I, I, I mean, just my own opinion, bearings uh, and options for uh, colors, at least like light gray or light tan to where I can dye it, you know. And maybe doing something to maybe embed the liners or lighten it up. Lighten it up. Eight ounces. Take it to six. I think you could do that if you wanted to. And I don't know that you need four millimeter blade stock. So you could do that. You could cut half a millimeter off of that. Just some other things. I think you could take the weight down. And it's nice deep carry clip. So, I mean, and it's right and left hand. Nice little lanyard hole. Got a backspacer. All right, you know, maybe you could have done uh, an aluminum uh, backspacer like you did on the Sedge. I mean, this is way lighter. Just check it out. There's a nine inch knife. It's 4.25 ounces. This is a 9.3. It's 8.15. I mean, that's insane, right? Come on, man. I mean, this is their knife. This is not their knife. This is two of their knives put together in one knife. This is my blackout sedge. 
You can't buy one, but you can buy the gray and the black and swap things around and make a blackout. So that's what I did. Because the other one is satin with light gray and I'm going to dye it. So that's an upcoming video. But there you go. See? These knives. They're about the same exact size. This one's in the four ounce range. This is in the eight ounce range. Is that, that's just all kinds of crazy, isn't it? And then how stunning would it be if you did a nice aluminum backspacer on there? And this one could use the deep carry that this one got, okay? That's too bad, but uh, otherwise, the, and they're both, God bless America, they're both on washers. This sucker was on bearings, and uh, the way I'm going to do the gray one, oh, baby, uh, without bearings. I'm going to keep it anyhow uh, on washers, but by the time I get done with it, it'll be the knife. Yes, it'll be a great one, and it's a big-ass dog. So, okay. Now, bitch and moan some more. Here we go. Let's, let's took it apart. Come on. Throw down the dirt rag. Oh, get, get my... Get my sedge out of here. I like that sucker. That gray one's going to be awesome when I get done with it. I might send to BJ Hill, have him do some other mods on it. That Wouldn't that be crazy? That'd be fun. Uh, let's take it apart. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I think I'll take the big dog apart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was thinking, mm, maybe I should take the medium, but, you know, hell, it's just... It's all the same game, right? As far as the net effect goes. So let's take the pocket clip completely off. Are we done yet? Okay. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. okay. Yeah, we got the liner, so that didn't pop at the same time. But, yeah, there you go. There's your scale. And uh, can we work this off? We can work it. Come on. There you go. There's the liner, and there's the washer. No, no, they, that is, oh, uh, well, yeah. That's probably what we're feeling. Yeah, and it's just kind of grungy. I think it will wear over time, but it'd probably be better if you got, like, some really fine grit sandpaper and went over it. It would probably improve the action. Because it's not that good. I can feel that it's gritty. And that looked kind of funky, didn't it? Yeah. It's not horrible, it's just, but that, that don't look too good. But they're solid, I mean, uh, it's not like you couldn't, you know, brush them up. But I think, I think that's what I'm, I think I'm feeling this right here. This, this one here is the funky one. So let's, oh, well, we got D-shaped pivot, by the way, you know, and there's your, I mean, they've skeletonized these liners, but those liners are some thick dogs. And you might be interested in how thick. I'll bet they're at least a millimeter. They're close. Hold on. 0.085. Oh, hell yeah. They're, yeah, shit. They're, two, they're over two millimeters. Okay? I mean, that's... They could have done one. Mm, lock bar, this is real hale and hearty. I mean, so if you really care about the integrity of the lock bar, you, you're all the way down that road. I think you're maybe too far down that road. Maybe a little overkill, but that's some heavy, heavy stuff. So if this is the presentation side, it looks like we've got a squared off area right, right there. Hmm. That's interesting. Kind of a strange position for it. Okay. So that's how that's going to go up through there. 
Okay, so that's what holds it. I guess the opposite then wouldn't have a squared off, and it doesn't. Okay, hmm, okay, you can do it that way, I guess. Which way am I going to put this against the blade for refit? I think I'm going to put this side here. See how that goes. I don't want to put any. Uh, I don't want to put any lube in here. Mm, yeah, this is the this is the side. I'll put the messed up side on the way out there, facing out in the. Okay. And then we can just put the outer scale on and drive this pivot screw back in. Come on, stand upright. There you go. Okay, I don't want to make it too tight, that's for sure. Let's kick this. And oh, crap, yeah, number six. Okay, we tighten down. Yeah. That looks good. Let's put our pocket clip lay these right here and let them drop on in. Okay. And uh Okay. Yes, they did. And this one Okay, let's make sure we're tight, and we are. And we're centered, and I hope I didn't get too brutal with that pivot. And yeah, I did. And still, yeah. let's take it back out. Yeah, we're still basically centered. Yeah. There's no play or anything, so we're good there. Give it just a little bit more. Just trying to get to a place where the, uh, the action is acceptable. It's going to take a little while. I'm going to have to maybe go back in there and and work on them washers. Or I could do it the lazy guy's way, send it to BJ and have him do it, along with some other mods, maybe acid wash the blade, do some other things. It would be kind of fun. Because this is a brute. This, this would be good, kind of badass, with acid washed. Uh, and maybe take the thumb studs off and put a hole. Eh, I don't know. Eh, you might be able to put a hole in there for finger flicking to hell with the thumb studs. Uh, you could do some other things with this maybe. So might be a good experimental toy, especially with those washers. Of course, you know, you could always measure the washers and go to Knife Maker Supply and get some replacement washers, whatever you want to do. Sand the washers that are already in there, buff them up good, and they'll probably be fine. But it's unfortunate it came that way, you know, because this other one, this other one's not that bad. Now, it, you can definitely feel a huge difference here. This is way, way smoother. Hmm. Okay. Well, I think I took up enough of your time. Uh, sorry about that. But, um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, maybe a little redundant about some of the features. I just think things could have been so much better uh, on this knife because I think that design was so promising. Um, obviously, the washers are a disappointment because on this particular unit, uh, they're rough. And so the action is really poor. This one is acceptable considering it's washers and considering they haven't been used a lot so they haven't kind of polished up under under time uh otherwise interesting uh, might make some good user knives and if you like washers 
well, then Steel Wheel might be your brand because they're making a lot of them with washers. So, they, you know, you don't have to worry about clearing the bearings out. I have no problem doing that. I, I can disassemble and, and clean bearings out. So uh, I'd prefer for, you know, that inconvenience uh, so that I can also have a bit more fidget factor. I'm going to leave you to it. Thank you so much. Yes, we do. We love them knives. So you guys stay sharp.